I was your lover and your secretary, working every day of the week. Our girl Mary J. Bly, she is just off of ripping the stage at the Super Bowl halftime show. At least I think so. A little hint, like this is being recorded before that happened. So if that didn't happen, uh, my bad. But we're going to just pretend that she ripped it up and held it down as the queen of hip hop soul always does. So today, in continued celebration of her incredible career, we are going to rank Mary J. Blige's iconic discography from bottom to the top. But first, before we do it, y'all know what's good here. You know how we do it. Take a second, hit that like button, hit that share button, hit that subscribe button, and show your boys some love. Look, this is how we get motivation. These things motivate me to create new videos, create new subscribers, new fans, stands, whoever else. Oh, let's pause on the stands, but... We can get the conversation going with your help. So thank you so much for all y'all do. Also, as a reminder, we are just ranking Mary J's solo LPs here. No Christmas album. I know y'all like that Merry Christmas. And no compilations. This is going to be the straight killer, no filler. Her 14 LPs from bottom to top. Let's get to it, Soul and Serio Session Style. All right, coming in at number 14 is Love and Life. There was a lot of buzz for this one because this was going to be the reunion of Mary J and Puff, and Sean Combs had so much to do with Mary J's essential ascent in 1992 to become the queen of hip hop soul. This was a reunion. Everybody was looking forward to it until we heard the finished product. I mean, it's not the worst album you ever heard, but with the hype that was for it, it doesn't match it at all. There's a lot of filler here, a lot of filler, and not too much that stands out. Even the singles today are just absolutely forgettable. Problem is, when you have that much hype and that much eh, there's not enough here for it to stand out. I give it a couple good tracks. I like It's a Wrap, a couple others on the second half. Kind of push it up and give it a decent listen. But overall, we could have skipped this one, man. Coming in at number 13 is Mary's latest, Good Morning Gorgeous. And sadly, I wish I could put this one higher on the list. I know many of us were really anticipating this one. And I'll tell you why. Because as you'll see on this list, Mary J's discography is kind of odd in that you'll see that many of these albums are rated really highly, but they aren't really memorable. So from a critic standpoint, you know, old crouchy players like me that's looking for all the technical stuff. Mary usually hits all those buttons, but a lot of time the, memorab the memorability of the album isn't there outside of the 90s album. So with this one, with the Super Bowl hype going into it, we thought this was a perfect opportunity for Mary to remind us who she is. And that was the problem. Half the album, it felt like she didn't know who she was. So the first half is... Unfortunately, if you're a fan of R&B in the 2010s and the 2020s, you know the score with our veterans. Too many artists trying to do what the children are doing. And it don't work because the kids not going to listen to you. Married kids don't want to hear you being TikTokish. They don't want to hear IG songs. They want to hear Mary. So when Mary steps out of her comfort zone to do those songs that don't fit her at all, it don't fit the album at all. And the first half is just no cohesion. It's just all over the place. But the second half, 
thankfully, really writes the ship. We get some solid production. We get some solid writing. Even the vocals seem stronger and more robust. She sounds like herself. She's really coming back into the empowerment phase of her career that has really defined the second half of her career. The album works really well there. Overall, this is a huge mixed bag. You cut off that first album and just rock with the second, you'll be all right. Coming in at number 12 is Stronger With Each Tear. A lot of these Mary albums kind of read almost like self-help books, but that's kind of what Mary's always been. She's always been that big sister, that guidance counselor. She is the epitome of, I went through it so you don't have to go through it. This album continues that kind of that path and trajectory. Problem is, it's just not here. Remember what I just said in the last review? A lot of these later albums just don't have the memorability factor, even if overall it's okay. There's some decent songs up here. That kitchen song, y'all, do you remember the kitchen song where she's like, don't have women rum rummaging through your kitchen? Sound like something my grandma would say. Why is, is this, there's some wisdom there? Also a little bit of weirdness. And that's the album in itself. There's some, there's some gems. There's some things that you can chuckle at, and there are definitely some things that will kind of stick to your ribs, but then the overall is just stuff that goes right over your head. Just not enough there to make a lasting impression, as we know she does. Number 11 is the Think Like a Man 2 soundtrack. Call me crazy, but I kind of love this one. So essentially, I mean, as the name suggests, this is a one woman show. Mary essentially did a whole soundtrack for the Think Like a Man 2 movie. And even though people tend to forget about it and it goes kind of by them, it's a really fun little release. It has all of Mary's kind of best assets in one package. We got the fun, upbeat songs. We've got the put the man in their place songs. And we've got the energy and passion that really thrives off of this. Again, as I will say with a lot of these albums lower on the list, there's not a lot that stands out. Some good stuff, sure, but nothing that you're going to remember and go back and revisit. When I went back and listened to the album, I was like, oh, yeah, I forgot about all fun and games and songs like that. Those are good songs, but they don't stand out and talk as far as her just iconic songs that we all know and love. A good release, pretty front to back, is actually pretty solid, but there's just not enough here that will make you come back for return business. <laughs> Coming in at number 10 is Growing Pains, another one that kind of gets lost in Mary's shuffle. And for what it's worth, it's pretty solid. I mean, there's some songs, of course, like Just Fine. Everybody knows that song. If you got an auntie in your life, you know Just Fine. If you have been to a function with people 35 and over, you have heard Just Fine. If you are a tire of family affair and dancery and the hateration, just Fine is the spiritual successor to that song. I'm tired of Just Fine. But I'm not tired of the album. The album, again, front to back, is pretty solid. Few holes, it just doesn't have enough that can let you remember what's going on. Doesn't have the pure standouts outside of that one song that we won't mention again. But far from a bad album, a pretty solid <laughs> Coming in at number nine is Strength of a Woman. This was a bit of a comeback of sorts for Mary in 2017 because she had a, again, some, some success, but nothing that really was memorable. Nothing that stuck to your ribs. Nothing that fans got excited about. But this album really came through. We got not one, but two number ones for Mary on this one. So that was a kind of a positive step in this direction. And as an artist who was kind of heading into the third decade of her career, that was pretty promising. Overall, the album is good. Again, like most of these albums at this point of the list, there are some holes. So you got the good singles, you got some solid album cuts, and then you got some album cuts, you're like, what is going on with this? And that unevenness kind of keeps it from hitting that upper echelon. 
But for what it's worth, it's not a bad album. It proved that Mary still had some gas left in the tank, both creatively and commercially. <laughs> Coming in at number eight, Mary is going to go across the pond for the London sessions. This is her chance to dive into some British soul. And this is the first time we've heard Mary tackle this, and she did it extremely well. Here's another album that people really kind of forget about because it can't kind of came out of nowhere, then it came and went. Had a couple of singles that got a little bit of attention, but the overall package. Folks didn't really had a tight chance, I feel like, really sit and gravitate and just kind of indulge it a bit. If you take the time to really enjoy it, I think this is well. It works really well. Mary's voice is kind of set and works for this British pop R&B sound, that soul pop sound that has permeated Britain. And I know a lot of people, I know a lot of you R&B true believers get all whiny about this. But hey, this is a sound I feel like that is an extent an authentic extension of R&B, so it should be treated as such. So no, it don't sound like Neptunes in 2001, but it's certainly a genre that deserves respect, and Mary handles it expertly. Overall, this isn't your classic Mary album. It's not going to be one that's going to resonate with all her fans, especially if you came up on the Tim's and Leather Pants days, but as a project and just soul, I think this is a great deviation to show that Mary's got some talent too. She's not a one trick pony. Decent release. Coming in at number seven, no more drama in my life. Shout out to the young and restless. This is a weird one to rank because if you remember, there were essentially two versions of this album long before Kanye was doing it. Mary had one version that came out in 2001, and then the later version when she had the red leather coat on looking like the Matrix. So this kind of, for this review, I kind of smashed them up both together to kind of get this placement. I know somebody's going to complain, but look, Glass, album reviews ain't an exact science. You get what you get, and this is what you get. And I think from the best of both albums, it's a pretty solid release. She's one that I would put the second album a little bit above the first version. They're pretty equal. I'll put the second a little bit above, excluding that Rainy Day song. I can't stand that wannabe TLC song. But the good really stands out here. And if you look at it from sequence, the first half of the album really, really hits good. When you get to the second half on both versions, things get a little shaky. But overall, we've got a great single that's very memorable. And we got, yes, Hateration in the Dancery is here. I'm so tired of that. But what we do get beyond that is some great album cuts. The Dance For Me song is better than the Dance For Me song that y'all know. If you know what I'm talking about, you know what I'm talking about. Dance For Me is better than Dance For Me. Check it out. You'll know what I'm saying. But I like this album a lot. It has a weird legacy because there are two different versions. So this might be the one time where I encourage y'all to like make your own version and then you can get the best of both worlds. But no matter which version you go with, I think you'll be satisfied either way. Yeah, said I should have been long gone. Yeah, yeah. I'm not going to cry. We're down to number six, and coming in at number six is My Life to The Journey Continues. This album had like 18 names, y'all. Act two, My Life to The Journey Continues. I think it's act one. I don't know. We're calling it My Life to. And you know, if you follow me on Soul and Stereo, I'm not a fan of sequel albums because I feel like it sets too high expectations. My Life is one of the best R&B albums of all time. Spoiler for later in this list. But when you say, I'm going to make a sequel to it, in your mind, you're saying you're going to have an album as good as one of the best albums ever. And you know, goodness well, you're not going to be able to reach that level. But for what it's worth, this album is a lot better than a lot of fans give credit to. This album is the album that Love and Life tried to be because 
Once again, Mary harkens back to her hip hop soul days. A lot of these out, a lot of these records really have hip hop influences very, very heavily. But she balances that well with the soul side. And coming together, you get an album that feels very fresh for its time, but very authentic to Mary. And there's a lot of album cuts here that y'all miss. This is the one album on this list that I think if you just kind of like didn't really get a chance to sit with it before or never heard it, take a moment, go check that one out. I think you'll enjoy it. Top five land already, and coming in at number five is the Mary album from Mary. Yeah, Mary from Mary. This one has an interesting legacy. So in 1999, Mary was on album number four. She had come off of three albums that were very successful. But to be honest, they all kind of were following the same path. You had the hip hop lace songs kind of thrown in with more traditional R&B. With this album, Mary said, we're going to go in a new direction. We're going to go heavy R&B, less on the hip hop. And it worked. Again, at the time, it was met with a little bit of, eh. Even I was kind of like, well, this is different. But I enjoyed it. I loved the authentic soul that was presented here. It was a much more mature Mary and one that was a direction that was sorely needed at this point in her career. So it's an album that at the time people were a little shaky on, but today it's beloved. And in some areas, many people consider this her best album now. So I'm sure that someone in the comments will be calling me, my mama, and my daddy all kind of names because it's not number one. And don't get me wrong, I love this album. I think that it deserves all the accolades and I'm glad that it's getting the love today that it should have gotten back then. But as an overall release, it does have a little sleepy moments. I will admit there are a few parts where I get a little drowsy, a little nyquil -ish But you look past that, overall, this is some of Mary's best, best work. And I'm glad that finally it's getting the respect that it's due. Coming in at number four is The Breakthrough. Don't call it a comeback. Unless you want to call it a comeback, that's kind of what this is. So remember, in 2003, we talked about the Love and Life album, and, 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 and not too great. This was her chance to rebound, because we know how we do. Once our legends give us one so-so album, y'all ready to say, they washed, it's over, throw it away. We were doing this in 2000, this ain't a Twitter thing, y'all been doing this. So Mary had to come back strong, and she really did. Again, this was another chance for her to reinvent herself, and she did that so strongly on the breakthrough. This is an album that really embraced the sound at the time, but Mary wasn't afraid to do Mary. She was going to continue to show that love and passion that emanates through every song lyric, but kind of building off of the No More Drama album where she was growing out of the heartbroken girl, she was now at the place where she's a woman. And she's a woman that's telling other women, this is how you get through those struggles. She ain't the sad girl no more. She is the woman that's really helping women grow into themselves. That's why the breakthrough was so strong. Great production. We got some great guest verses, even from herself. We get some rapping Mary on this joint, and she don't sound half bad. This album was a real surprise in 2005 and continues to be one of her best outings to date. All right, real quick before we hit the top three, you know what to do. We're going to take a moment. I need you to hit that like. I need you to hit that subscribe button. In fact, hold up. Hold up right now. I'm going to stop this video. Go ahead and hit like. We're going to pause for a second. Hit like. Don't do it. We're going to wait. We're going to wait. We're going to wait. All right, now hit subscribe. It don't take but a second. Go ahead and do it right now. I'm waiting. I'm chilling. We're going to go after this. Yes. All right, you hit it? Good. Now, after you do those two, then you're going to take that link and then you're going to share it with your peoples so we can keep this thing going. See, it ain't hard, players. It ain't hard. Like and subscribe, it ain't hard. Let's go to number three. Coming in at number three is What's the 411? If you weren't outside in 1992, it's hard to understand how impactful this album was because it really was an album that helped change everything. Mary J 
team with Puff. Shout out to Jodeci because they were on the same wavelength. Those team, that team married. Ah, you see what I did there? Married. She married the sounds of soul with the burgling sounds of hip hop at the time with the style, with the attitude, with the production, and created this album that was just so fresh and unique, and it became her calling card. What's the 411 is just, when you look at a track list, it isn't even a very long album, but nearly every song was all over the radio. It is a defining moment in R&B and a defining moment for Mary's career. Most artists go a whole career trying to have an album as impactful and as strong as this album. And this is like number three on the list. So that shows the level of quality that we have here. Absolutely one of the best albums of the 90s. And it still ain't her best. All right, coming in at number two, Share My World. Y'all gonna complain, but this is my video. In my opinion, this is Mary J's most complete work. I said it and I stand by it. Here's why, from top to bottom, I can't think of another release from Mary that has the ballads, that has the radio-friendly songs, that has the incredible album cuts, that has the songs that are really saying something, that we go through the sadness, the empowerment, the triumph, the, the highs and lows of a relationship were all encompassed here. And it's done better than any other Mary album, in my opinion, when it comes to that. So from front to back, it's hard to even find a flaw. Even at its length, it's a little longer than most albums I enjoy, there's still not a weak spot. This album really, really shows Mary's growth three albums in and her reign continued to rise. But as great as this album is, it still ain't her best because there's one album that has a legacy that's even stronger than that one. That's why that gets number one, even though, in my opinion, I feel like this is a more solid, cohesive release as far as showing the diversity of Mary's talent. Still ain't number one because number one is. Yes, obviously number one is my life. There is nobody that clicked on this video and thought anything else. And there's a reason for that. My Life is one of the best albums of the 1990s. Honestly, let's go further than that. It's one of the better albums in R&B history. Yes, I will say that. Because it is stands as a shining example of R&B's glory days. We always talk about the 90s and how great and transformative it is. This album stands at the top of the heap for that. If I ever make that list of best albums of R&B albums of the 90s, which I'm afraid to do because there's so many great ones, it's no question this is going to be top five. Probably top two, maybe number one. We will see when that day comes. But the reason why this resonates so strongly is because it became the testament for the brokenhearted girl in the 90s. If you were a young lady going through it, this was your album. And in 2022, if you going through it, it's probably still your album. She spoke with a maturity and a passion that resonated with men, women across the board. And even us brothers had to recognize and We had to get our game straight because she was telling truth as it was. This album has touched so many lives. And when it comes to production, songwriting, sequencing, everything that we check and legacy, there is no album that beats it. So both this and Share My World get the patented Cherish, beloved, five stars from your boy here at Soul and Stereo. You know, I don't give them out easily, but those two albums get it. And my life, easily. Best album of Mary's career. All right, Mary fans, you know how we do it. Join me in the comments right now. Share your ranking of Mary's albums. Let me know what you think. If you think my life is the best, you probably do. Let me know if you think Mary should have been higher on the list. You probably think so. Let me know what you think of Good Morning Gorgeous. Let me know what you think about the Super Bowl. That was great. At least I think it was great. We can hope. But let us know below. Share your comments. Let us know if you have any other albums you want me to get down to the ranking business. We'll put that on the back burner and get that going in a future video. And as always, this session is a wrap. Play on, players. Oh. 
I ain't gonna share the tear cause you lied. Mm -hmm. I said I can't do it. Hey, have you seen my black 